Hey everybody, welcome to It's a Burpee Thing. Hey, hey, it's a Burpee Thing. It's a Burpee Thing. All right, so today, um, my grandkids and my daughters are out with their dad. And I don't have to cook tonight, say so, um, I went and got some McDonald's. So I got some fries, two apple pies, and I wanted to try one of these new burgers they had. It's called the Double Bacon, Double Bacon Steakhouse Burger, I guess it's called. I mean, here, let me get a little closer. That's what it looks like. It has like onion rings on it and bacon. It's all right. It don't look as good as the pictures though. Look at my kitty cat. All right, Heavenly Father, thank you for this food that I'm about to receive. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right. All right, so my sister calls me and asks me, did I see the R. Kelly thing that was on TV? I said, no, I didn't see it. Why, what happened? Well, she said, child, you gotta go look at it. So I went and looked at it, right? And I said to myself, okay. And then I was reading some of the comments and hearing what like the different anchors were saying and everything. How the way R. Kelly was acting means he's guilty and all this different stuff. Come on now. If you facing 20 to 25 years in jail, you don't think you gonna be going crazy if you were innocent and you didn't do nothing? Like really? You know, I just think it's crazy. Um what's going on and then she told me to look at the women so i looked at Joc jocelyn i think her name is or something like that and the other girl video and to me it seemed like they sister wives they got a tv show about sister wives so why is it that what they're doing is so wrong when they got a damn tv show and they got wives already looking for second wives. Some got two wives already looking for the third one. I don't know what the difference is, but the way that they were talking and the way the one girl was trying to console the other girl, it's like they best friends, you know, sister wives. So, I mean, I don't know. But it's like, who are we to judge how somebody wants to live their lives? If that's what they want to do, hey. You know, if it isn't of God, you know, they got to meet their maker one of these days. You know what I mean? But, all right, so I'm going to try this burger. I don't know. It don't look too appetizing to me. You know, people say that you don't eat with your eyes, but, hmm. I eat with my eyes, and it's not looking too hot over here. <laughs> So I just came back in from McDonald's. My stupid cat, oh my God. He's like a daggling dog. Comes over and bothers you. Why are you eating? Driving me nuts. Um, all right, so this burger has a bacon on um, Barbecue sauce on um, mm. Bacon, barbecue sauce on it, I mean, I mean, it tastes all right. But, you know, I just, I don't understand, like, people and, like, like, do these people think that if they get R. Kelly put in jail, that their kids will come home and uh, talk to them and come around them and be around them all the time. Um, if they care about him like they say, no, they probably will not want to be bothered with their family even more. I mean, come on, you guys. Listen, they're both grown. They both can decide what they want to do. And the other women that were there were able to leave. So if they truly wanted to leave, they would leave. So, I don't know. Can I help you? Go upstairs to daddy. <laughs> you see my pit bull right there all in my face. Ah. Right. Yeah. 
This burger, all right, y'all. It's messy, but it is definitely all right. So, um, <clears throat> I hope and pray that every party, you know, everything gets solved and everything, but if he didn't do the things that they're saying he did, um, you know, hopefully he can go home and live the rest of his life and everything. But it's just crazy. It's just crazy how everything is going on. And then, you know, what about all the people that he, like, worked with and stuff like that? They work with him close up and close and personal with him. So why aren't any of them speaking out and, you know, talking on his behalf? And I had said to my husband, they probably not talking on his behalf because they probably got some skeletons in their closet and don't want people to start snooping around in what they got going on, you know? But it's a shame, it really is. And then for people to say that they're brainwashed, I mean, they both look like intelligent girls. Like, I don't know, if the parents raised them right, then how can they get brainwashed? Like, I, I, that's just, I don't know. That makes you, for them saying that they're brainwashed, that's because that's why they're staying there and stuff like that. That makes them look weak and like what values and what things did their parents teach them as they were growing up for someone to, you know, do the things that they do to them. I, I'm confused. But for, I don't know. I don't care who I'm with. I would never disrespect my mother or father because it's in the Bible. And the way that she was saying how her mom and them were lying and all they wanted dough and all that different stuff. And then another thing. What about, you know, everybody is so concerned about what R. Kelly's doing with these girls. I guess the focus is on the two girls, but then they got these other girls that supposed to have been underage at the time he was dealing with them and all this stuff <clears throat> what about the sugar daddies out there okay sugar daddies are messing with people that are 19 18 years old in college 20 21 and they like 70 50 60 what about them you know what I mean it's like just because this man is famous and has so much and you know you want to destroy his legacy like they destroyed Bill Cosby's legacy it's just messed up it really is you know if he if Bill Cosby did all them things like they say that he did back then why didn't you know anyone talk back then that's what I'm not understanding you know why wait to this poor man what he like 80 years old sitting mom, in jail now all the white people too, with like with no with, you know, his his wife. They said his wife or his kids and nobody came to visit him. That's not. Y'all was there with him when he was rolling in the dough and everything. You should still stand by him. And plus, if all this was happening, best believe the wife knew what was going on. So why she didn't stop it if it did happen? You know what I mean? It's just crazy how they make, it, make black women seem like they dumb and they don't know what the hell's going on or they don't know what they doing. That's not true. And that pisses me off. If that's the lifestyle they choose to live, back on the R. Kelly and the the two young ladies uh, story, if that's the life they choose to live, let them live it. They ain't not hurting nobody. And it's a shame because, you know, you're taking everything away from this poor man. You know, I mean, listen, when I was a young buck, I went to the New Edition concert. They was in Philadelphia, okay? And I got to meet one of the, the stars in New Edition. Shoot, I was lying about my age trying to meet them and get with them. And, and you know what I mean? Hopefully I got a boyfriend in him and stuff like that. It was like, it, it's just crazy. Like, that people think that women don't know what the hell they doing. Come on now. He's an icon. Come on. You probably say probably seen him was like Chang Chang, you know, wishing that they could be wifey number two. <laughs> Who knows, man? But it's just crazy 
what's going down with him. I feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for all the parties involved. You know what I mean? But you, I mean, come on. Like, really? You know, somebody told me, my sister told me, because she watches a lot of just news stuff and all this different stuff. I'm not that type of person because I don't want to keep bringing negativity into my life, into my mind, and stuff like that. Like, negative and stuff, that stays away from me. I really don't get involved with all that. But, you know, since my sister has said something to me, I looked at it. Because you taking all that negativity stuff in that's going on with everybody else, then your world gets negative things popping in and everything. You know, and I'm just, you know, I'm too spiritually grounded to be bringing all that negative stuff inside, you know. But, you know, I'm praying for all of them. I hope everything goes well. You know, I hope and pray, you know, if he is innocent, he can prove that he's innocent. You know what I mean? But they talking about new tapes and stuff. Who knows? I don't know. Shoot. Makes you think, like, if I ever got a divorce or some heart trying to talk to me, I need to see your birth certificate. Not your ID. <laughs> Not your word. I need a birth certificate. You know what I mean? That's how it make you feel that you gotta do if they be trying to take all mine, you know? Mm -mm. That's crazy. <clears throat> but, you know, for her to be saying that her mother and father were lying and crying, and then they was trying to say that R. Kelly was in the, like, in the room, and, um, in the room, and was coughing to let them know that he was there, and all this different stuff. Yeah. I right, yeah. One of the um, people said to Gail, were you scared when he jumped up and was yelling and going crazy and talking and all that different stuff? Because she stood straight still. She had like, like, nigga, hit me if you want to. Touch me if you want to attitude. That's how she sat there. And they were saying that, you know, that she had bodyguards and stuff like that in there. So... If you're on television and you're with someone and they have their body cards and they have all these different people there, why sit there and play the charades? If you want to be out of a situation, why sit there? Tell them, I need help. Please help me. They didn't know R. Kelly was there because he wasn't supposed to be in the room or whatever. When they first saw the interview, they thought he wasn't there. So why didn't he tell, they tell Gail, please help me. We got to get out of here. We, you know, he, you know, we, we can't just leave. We need help. I'm pretty sure them bodyguards that was there for Gail would have been bodyguarding for them. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. It's just, it's just sad because everybody keeps saying that they're brainwashed. Like they some dumb, dipsy girl. Shoot, and one was in college. The one graduated from high school. I don't know if she did any more school after that. But the way that the parents and them talked about them, they were very intelligent girls. So why would they let somebody just treat them wrong and, and be nasty to them and, uh, and do whatever they want, you know? I don't know. But I'll be praying for, you know, people keep saying, why are older people, you know, taking up for our calorie and stuff? It's probably because we grew up in that time. And it's plenty of people, like today on Michael Jackson top again. I heard my sister tell me something about a documentary that got about um, Michael Jackson trying to ruin his stuff. It's crazy. Let me tell you something. It, Elvis Presley, I believe, married a 14-year-old. My husband was telling me a lot of them different, the Beatles, different people like that. A lot of these other people out here, <laughs> actors, actresses, singers, and all that type of stuff, messing with young people, but you messing with these, these men. I just can't believe that he raped anybody, took anybody's stuff. It's hard, it's hard for me to believe that. It's hard for me to believe that you could walk out the door, 
stay there for months. Some of them stayed there for years. And somebody's treating you like that, not feeding you. And you sitting there taking it? What? Please. And, but you walked out the door three years later? Come on now. That's crazy. You walk out the door years later, it's not like he kept you there. You could have left, walked out whenever you want. That's what one of the girls said in the documentary. She just rolled. So why is it so hard for anybody else? You know what I mean? It's just, it's just a shame. It really is. But if he had a concert in Philly, I would be there. <laughs> I would definitely be there. I like R. Kelly. You know, they should have got him back in the day. If all that stuff was true, what he was doing back in the day, they should have got him back in the day and just let it, instead of letting him go all these years and then they want to bring the past up and then bring new stuff. Come on now. And then his wife, one minute she says she hate him on a documentary, he ain't shit and all this different stuff. But then I, and my sister told me she was watching. <laughs> She was watching YouTube and she in a video talking about how he had to do what he had to do to take care of his family and I love him for that and this and that and this and that. Was she bipolar too? Like, come on. Like, if somebody is that bad to you, why would you stay there? Why would you have children with them? Come on. He gotta have some kind of good qualities for them to be staying all these years. I don't believe in that brainwashed bull crap. You do what you want to do. You do what you want to do. Straight up. But that's enough of that sad depression stuff. I don't need none of that in my oral <laughs> or around me right now. So my birthday is in what? Next Friday. And I can't wait. Oh my goodness. My flyers turned out so nice, y'all. <clears throat> You can check my flyer out on, um, did I put on Instagram? I got it on Instagram. My kids got it on their Instagram. This party is going to be the turn up, turn up. I'm going to be 43 years old. My husband's going out with me, and that's a shock. Eh? <laughs> that's definitely shocking because he don't like going out nowhere. <laughs> but he's going out to hang out for a little while. <clears throat> so... I'm excited. His friends are coming. My family's coming. Friends are coming. I'm, I um, I asked, uh, you know, some people that I went to high school with and things like that, people who I worked with and things like that, to come because I haven't seen them in so long. You know, people that I was close to that I haven't seen for a long time, told them to come. I'm 43 years old. I'm blessed and thank you, Heavenly Father, for letting me see another day, another year another hour because somebody didn't wake up to death but um god is truly good he really is but i'm excited i really am i haven't been out in so long it's been a while since i've been out a while been so busy with the business and with the grandkids and you know trying to take care of things in the house and everything. I think the last time I went out was my girlfriend Kim. Hey Kim! For her birthday, we went to uh, a restaurant with some of her other girlfriends. I hope they all come um, next Friday. But it's a sports bar where I'm having my little birthday shindig there. And um, <clears throat> what else? Um, it's called Stats, I believe, down in Rittenhouse, and I can't wait to go. I heard it was remodeled and all that different stuff, so this should be fun. And I am going to take you guys with me. So, I hope you guys like it. I think I'm going to wear, um, go to the mall and get me a light blue shirt and some jeans and then wear some like little cowgirl boots or something like that with my um uh, excuse me with my brown jacket with my little fringes on it and they thing 
I'm gonna be too cute <laughs> for my birthday. Cause they said that it wasn't a dress code, you know what I mean? So, cause some places in the city you have to like wear heels or, you know, boots with heels. But, um, he said it wasn't no dress code. So, this is the second time uh, my friend from school, he um, is a promoter, he promotes parties. What is his name? Who is Brabell Entertainment, I think it's called. I don't know, but I'll get the information I'll put it in the bottom. So if you're interested in having parties and stuff, you should call them because um, last time I had a party, it was at Blue Martini in the city, and it was really, really nice, and we had a really nice time. And, you know, he makes you feel comfortable. He makes sure you have everything you need for your birthday. So everything's popping and cool. You don't have to worry about nothing. But, um, I can't wait. It's gonna be fine. Alright, I ain't want this video to be too long. Um, make sure y'all like, subscribe, and comment down below. Tell me what y'all think about this R. Kelly situation. Because, you know, like I said, it seemed like to me, it's a sister wife type thing. What's it called? Um, I forget what the name is when you have more than one wire and all that different stuff and you gotta watch where you live because some places you're not allowed to do that and all that. But they got a TV call, a show called Sister Wives that come on. Mm. Is it TLC? I think it's TLC that comes on because I watch that. It's right on my DVR because I think it's interesting. It really is. Like, you know, what in the world? Man. Some of these women, boy, they strong because I'm not sharing my man, huh? What? One day you sleeping there, or one week you sleeping there, and then you come, oh no. I'm too jealous for that stuff. <laughs> too jealous for that stuff, boy. I don't know how they do it. And then some of them want all these kids and stuff, Lord have mercy. Three children is enough for me. The three I got. Oh my goodness. It's easy when they little, little. But when they get older in the teenage years and preteens, they want this, they want that. They wear the same size as you. You know what I mean? It's crazy. I don't know. Because that's what they said. Some of them, well, the one couple on there, he was like, God wanted them to be this way. So that's why they're doing it. And I never heard of this part, but he was saying that when they died, like basically they're getting another sister wife and they, they, the, the sister wives and the husband, and when they pass away, they all go to glory together and they all live as uh, kings and queens and they live together. I never heard that part of the Bible, but... <laughs> I don't know, but to each is own, you know what I mean? To each is own. It is what it is, you know? I feel like you just live your life, be happy, believe in whatever God that you want to believe in, you know what I mean? But when the end of time comes or when God comes back, you know, you got to deal with your maker. That's how I look at it. Me personally, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I believe in the Trinity of three. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know, the things that I do, I have to be accountable when Jesus comes back. You know, and you know, whatever religion or whatever they believe in, that's something that they have to be accountable for if that's not in God's plan or if that's not what God wants. You know what I mean? But who are we to judge? Who are we to judge? Everybody has the right to live their lives. That's how I look at it. So, again, thank you for watching. It's a birthday day. Hey, hey, <laughs> it's a birthday day. Hey. It's a very day. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. I'm really going this time. Love you guys. Love you, love you, love you guys. All right, I will catch y'all all on the fly. Peace.